Hi guys, welcome back once again and my name is Mrs. Jo Antito Mora de Visay and today we're going to have a quick discussion on hybrid financing. The source of financing can either be debt or equity or it can be a combination of both which we call hybrid. And today we examine the four types or classifications of hybrid financing or the different financial instruments that is used to raise capital. We have the following. We have the preferred stock, the leasing, warrants, and convertible. These are sources of financing which cannot be clearly categorized as a debt or equity. Let's start with preferred stocks. Preferred stocks are shares of stocks. It gives its holder certain privileges that make them senior to common stockholders. They have preference over common stockholders with respect to the distribution of earnings. And it also earns a fixed dividend payment. Question, is preferred stock a debt or an equity? A preferred stock is a hybrid security. It's a hybrid of debt and equity. And it is similar to debt in some respects and to equity in other ways. In the accounting perspective, it is classified as an equity. Therefore, it is shown on the balance sheet as an equity account. However, in the finance perspective, a preferred stock lies somewhere in between debt or equity. Debt and equity, and it imposes a fixed charge, so it increases the firm's financial leverage or value. But removing the preferred dividend does not force a company into bankruptcy. A lot of preferred stocks are said to be a cumulative feature. It is a protective feature that requires preferred dividends previously not paid to be paid before any common share dividends can be paid. Therefore, cumulative preferred stock should be paid first before the common shareholders receive any dividend. These dividends, if unpaid, are called arrears, which accumulates until it is paid. Another type of preferred stock is a preferred stock that is adjusted regularly, and this is called adjustable rate preferred stock. From the standpoint of an issuer, do you think financing with preferred stock is better? Well, financing with a preferred stock has its advantages and disadvantages. Failure to pay preferred stock cannot lead to bankruptcy, while failure to pay the interest payment on debt can lead to bankruptcy. Another advantage, by issuing preferred stock, the firm avoids the dilution of common equity that occurs when common stock is sold. Another, because preferred stock sometimes has no maturity, preferred issues can reduce the cash flow drain from the principal repayments that occurs with debt issues. One disadvantage of preferred stock is that an issuer company cannot claim tax deductions on dividend payment. Consequently, the after-tax cost is preferred. It's typically higher than the after-tax cost of debt. Another disadvantage of a preferred stock is that preferred dividends are considered a fixed cost. Therefore, their use is similar to debt. It increases the firm's financial risk and its cost of common equity. What we have just discussed are preferred stock classified as a hybrid of debt and equity. Now, let's move to leasing. A lease is a contract or part of a contract that conveys the right to use an asset for a period of time in exchange for consideration. The parties to a lease can be classified as a lessee and a lessor. The lessee is the party that uses the leased property, while the lessor is the owner of the leased property. Leasing takes different forms. The first one is the sale and leaseback arrangements. These are arrangements where the firm sells property such as land, buildings, and equipments, and leases the property back for a specific period under specific terms. The operating leases is a lease where the lesser maintains and finances the property. While the financial capital leases does not provide for maintenance services and it is not cancelable, it is fully amortized over its life. Historically, 
lease payments were shown as operating expenses on a firm's income statement that it creates an off-balance sheet source of financing. This means that assets and liabilities do not appear on the firm's balance sheet, but on the same time, the property can be used by the firm. However, this has been corrected by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, issued FAS 13, which is now referred to as Accounting Standards Codification Topic 840, or ASC 840. This requires an unqualified audit report firms that enter into financial lease, they must restate their balance sheets. This is to report leased assets as fixed assets and to show the present value of future lease payments as liabilities, which we call capitalizing the lease. And its net effect is to cost the firm that leases reporting a balance sheet similar to the firm that buys a property after the asset increase. The lessee must determine whether leasing an asset will be less costly than buying it, and the lessor must decide whether the lease will provide a reasonable rate of return. To reiterate, a lease is comparable to a loan because the firm must make a specific series of payments, and failure to make those payments will result to bankruptcy. Thus, it is most appropriate to compare the cost of leasing with the cost of debt financing which is more important, which is more profitable. In your book, there is an example on the Mitchell Electronics Company. Mitchell plans to acquire equipment with a five-year life that has a cost of $10 million delivered and installed. Mitchell can borrow the required $10 million using a 10% loan to be amortized over five years. Alternatively, Mitchell can lease the equipment for five years at a rental charge of $2.8 million per year, payable at the end of the year. The lesser will own the asset at the expiration of the lease, the lease payment schedule is established by the potential lessor, and the Mitchell can accept it, reject, or negotiate in different terms. Number four, the equipment will be used for five years, at which time it is estimated net salvage value will be $715,000. Mitchell does not plan to continue using the equipment beyond the five years. So, if Mitchell buys the equipment, it would expect to receive $715,000 before taxes when the equipment is sold in five years. This is what we call the asset's residual value. Number five, the lease contract stipulates that the lessor will maintain the equipment. However, if Mitchell borrows and buys, it will incur the cost of maintenance. This service will be performed by the equipment manufacturer. At a fixed contract rate of $500,000 per year, payable at year end. Next is warrants. A warrant is a long-term option from a company that gives the holder the right to buy a stated number of shares of the firm stock at a specified price for a specified length of time. Generally, warrants are distributed with debt and they are used to convince investors to buy long-term debt that carries a lower coupon rate than would otherwise be required. Why do they use warrants in financing? Small, rapidly growing firms generally use warrants as sweeteners when they sell debt or preferred stock. Warrants can be classified as a detachable warrants, where warrants can be detached from a bond and they can be traded independently of the bond. Warrant holders can choose to exercise their option to buy the stock, and we have what we call stepped up exercise prices. These are exercise prices that are specified to rise if the warrants are not exercised before the specified dates. For example, Kylie Company has warrants outstanding with an exercise price of 25 pesos until December 31, 2021, at which time the exercise price rises to 30 pesos. If the price of the common stock is over 25 pesos, just before December 31, 2021, 
many warrant holders will exercise their options before the stepped-up price takes effect and the value of the warrant falls. Lastly, we talk about convertible securities. These are bonds or preferred stock that can be exchanged at the option of the holder for the common stock of the issuing firms. Unlike the exercise of warrants, which brings in additional funds to the firm, conversion does not provide capital. Debt or preferred stock is simply replaced on the balance sheet by common stock. Of course, reducing the debt of preferred stock will improve the firm's financial strength, make it easier to raise additional capital, but raising additional capital will require a separate action. There are two important terminologies on a convertible security. The first is the conversion ratio. The number of shares of a common stock that are obtained by converting a convertible bond or share of convertible preferred stock. While the conversion price is the effective price paid for a common stock obtained by converting a convertible security. The formula in getting the conversion price is if we get the par value of a bond given up divided by the shares received, while as the conversion rate can be computed by getting the par value of a bond given up divided by conversion price. Similar to other hybrid financing, convertibles have advantages and disadvantages. An advantage from the issuer's standpoint is that convertibles, just like bonds with warrants, they offer a company the chance to sell debt with a low interest rate in exchange for a chance to participate in the company's success if it does well. Another advantage is that convertibles provide a way to sell common stock at prices that are higher than those that are currently prevailing in the market. Some companies want to sell common stock, not the debt, but believe that the stock price is temporarily depressed. One disadvantage of a convertible is if the stock price increased greatly, the firm probably would have been better off had it used straight debt in spite of its higher cost and then later sold common stock and refunded the debt. Convertibles also have a low coupon interest rate and the advantage of this low cost debt will be lost when the conversion occurs. Lastly, if the company truly wants to raise its equity capital and if the stock price does not rise sufficiently after the bond is issued, the company will be stuck with debt rather than its desired equity. So these are the different types of hybrid financing. To enumerate, we have the preferred stock, leasing, warrants, and convertibles. So I hope you learned something from today's topic. Thank you for listening.